Hi guys, welcome IGTV. Um, today's purpose of the video is to talk about the actual money breakdown of um, hosting a live event. Now, if, if you're new here, I'm Jamie and I am a retreat planner for coaches and creators and I build uh, tailored experiences that like sell out and <laughs> keep your people coming back. Um, my favorite thing about what I do is the connections that, that people make while on these experiences. And sometimes I'll say events, sometimes I'll say the word retreat. In general, I mean like an in-person small event, which is like up to 15, maybe 25 people at most. Once you hit that 30 person mark, um, it becomes more like a classroom and less like a sweet, intimate connection. So I tend to focus on smaller events that drive the connection, the rapport, the memories, and really those those networking abilities to um, to further your business, to further your connections, to further the people you want to recommend, to work with, etc. And also um, from a coaching, so that's from like an attendee experience, but like from a coaching experience, like you're giving your clients a high touch experience. What that means is if you're in a coaching program or if you're like three layers up, so maybe you offer just a mastermind or a group coaching, um, you know, retreats are a way to have, to offer a high touch experience to clients that you might not get to really interact with one-on-one. -on -one. So that's a benefit. So today's uh, video, um, we're going to talk about um, two different kinds of experiences. So some coaches that want to host a retreat tend to look at Airbnb. And that and there's pluses and minuses about Airbnb, but I am going to break down some of the numbers. Um, the other experience I'm going to break down is utilizing a resort. And a resort will be like a hotel with spas and meeting room rentals and like the whole shebang there. So two very different experiences, two slightly different time commitments and um, things like that. But I just want to break down the numbers of two avenues that you can uh, or where like places that you can host an event like a retreat um, and about how much that's going to cost you. For each experience and I have it side by side so let's just jump in um, I am going from numbers that I have recently received so I am planning um, an art and mindfulness retreat with my partner Kim um, she's Creole creatives I think I said that right um, Creole creative canvases I think is her IG handle if you want to go check her out she is most notably known for sip and paints but she also does other things like that. So we are com we are partnering together to offer an art and meditation retreat. So I'm actually gonna show you like similar numbers to what I just received for a resort experience and then also what I put together for an Airbnb experience. Um, so the first, the first part of this I wanna talk about are the accommodations and it's going to be one of the biggest differences. So with an Airbnb, you are limited on the amount of people that you can have um, because you're limited on the amount of beds that the that the you know the home offers. Uh, you never want to stick anybody on a couch, and you definitely never want to put an air mattress out or anything like that. So with an Airbnb, you have to be very mindful that there's enough beds and one person per bed. Because sometimes Airbnb says it sleeps 20, but there's only eight beds. And you're like, ah, that math does not work. So you have to be very mindful. But for an Airbnb that I was looking at, the cost to have 15 paid tickets, 15 paid attendees, so it sleeps 17 or more, um, was about $3,712. This is for a three-night stay, three nights rented out. Um, and that, that's consistent on both. I guess I should have started with that. So the commonalities between them are the nights, the nights staying, the amount of attendees, paid tickets, and then the amount of total people. So the amount of night stays, three. The amount of people, paid tickets is 15. The total people is 17. Okay, so for Airbnb, for a house that sleeps that many people, $3,712. 
for a resort, the resort um, and spa experience, the, for the accommodations for that many people, the cheapest way we could cut it, $14,095.80. So that is a giant $11,000 difference um, just right there between the two. Um, it's It all works out in the end, but just be mindful. So a difference between the two ways of payment though is Airbnb usually um, requests at least half up front for the larger, more expensive properties. That is also like um, a rule of the Airbnb host. They can, they can ask for it all up front or they can ask for it half now, half later. For the resort, they might ask for something um, like a deposit or something, but in general, most of these expenses are going to be due either upon arrival or upon completion of the event. It's called settling the master account. Okay, so the next expense that I have down here is um, a chef. So one of the things that we talked about is ha as an experience is having a chef come in and, and teach us how to prepare a dinner. So like a cooking class. So to have that at the Airbnb, that's gonna cost about $3,000. And that does include the food and the experience. To have that same experience at the resort, it's gonna cost about $2,550. So pretty similar in price. Another experience that we're having is a yoga instructor for two different days. So we've put that as a flat rate at $300 a piece. So that's very consistent. Um, Another thing that kind of varies um, pretty substantially would be the food. And I, for this food itemization, I am just quoting breakfast and lunch. So at the Airbnb, it would be like the host and myself preparing breakfast, setting breakfast out, that kind of thing. For lunch, it would be the same. At the resort, the breakfast would be in a, in a, rent, a room rental off to our side. It would probably be, I think, a buffet technically. Um, with COVID, there are certain protocols you have to follow with buffets, but that's kind of how the breakfast and lunch was broken out. So for the Airbnb breakfast and lunch, it's about $500. For the resort, it's about $1,359. So the next expense I have is for wine and beer. Now, so this is a controversial one that some people not uh, not everyone like wants to have wine and beer at their at their event. Um, I argue that you should have it because it kind of lightens the mood. And if you're at an Airbnb or at a resort, you can definitely, um, you know, have a cutoff point to where you control how much consumption happens. Because a lot of people are like worried that people are going to get hammered and then they're not going to they're going to be hung over the next day and yada yada and they don't want to have to take care of drunk people either so you know when the cat's away the mice will play type of thing and there's a way to control that so that shouldn't necessarily be a concern anymore but for the airbnb experience i have about a hundred dollars because like you can go to costco and get some pretty cheap um you can you can like make this super affordable for mimosas and then some bottles of wine at dinner um for um for the resort though, to have a reception and you have to have bartenders and things like that, that's $2,380. I'm gonna skip through some of these. Some of the consistent expenses I have written down are marketing at $200 regardless, across the board, swag bags at $1,400. That That is a very large number, but it also includes um, some, other, some other things. Um, so also the big another big difference between the cost between an Airbnb and a resort can be the room rental. So at a resort or a hotel, you generally have to pay to rent a room and that's where you're going to have like your journaling, your art classes, your yoga, your meditation, and it's a general room that people just meet at. At the Airbnb, that could be considered the lawn, the living room, the basement room that's big enough, like it's just kind of all built in. So for Airbnb, I just have it at zero because we would just use the property itself. But for the resort, that's $6,200. $6, I've also added a contingency. Contingency is great because some things or some costs are very unexpected. Um, you might have forgotten something. Maybe you budgeted incorrectly for an expense or like something, some fluke happens and you have to pay extra shipping. All that kind of stuff like 
is melded into consist contingency. And I always offer or I always suggest 15% of the overall cost. So for the Airbnb experience, 15% is roughly $1,794. Um, for the resort, a contingency would be $4,650. So each experience total right now, total cost for Airbnb is $20,757. And for a resort would be $42,643. Now that is a difference and $21,886.57. I even went down to the change all. So I wanna pause here and just kind of talk about that difference and why it should or should not matter. Now, to most people, forking out $10,000 or $20,000, sorry, forking out $20,000 or $42,000 is almost gut-wrenching. Like, that's a lot of fucking money. That is... That is almost the amount of money like that m most people, like the average salary in America is. So <laughs> the median household income. So it's a lot of fucking money. Um, and that's okay. I want you to know that not all of this is due up front. I want you to know that you only have to have a portion of it up front and then the rest of it will be covered with ticket sales. But swallowing the pill of $20,000 or $42,000 is very hard and extremely scary for most people. And I completely understand why. I get it. It's a lot. Remember, we're having 15 people. Is one So for the Airbnb, is $1,384. So when you look at the giant price tag and then you say, $1,384, can I do that? Yeah. You can do that. You can easily do that. You can you know and see a ton of people charging way more than that for their experienced retreat. Like way more. So that's pretty good. You know that you can sell that. For the resort, that's $2,843 per paid ticket is to cover the cost. So right now I have the Airbnb, the 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 retreats ticket price for the Airbnb experience at $1,997. So remember coaches, if you're starting out, then this is a high, high touch point experience. This is something that your people are gonna have access to, to you for three days. Your experience is completely covered by the cost. I built that in for my, for my cost to be there on site and for your cost to be there. And that if you are already selling a coaching program that is close to this amount, you can definitely sell a ticket at that amount. Overall, the profit per ticket, per paid ticket, is $613.19. That rounds out the, the retreat host total ticket profit at $9,197.85. So almost 10 grand for a weekend. That's pretty dang good. I mean, you're gonna have to spend some time marketing, but if you hire me, a retreat planner, but for me to take over and plan the entire retreat, you're still gonna make $9,100 to show up and have a fun girls weekend. So let's hop over to the resort. So remember the cost per pay ticket is $2,843. To be able to make some sort of money on top of this, right? You're going to have to charge more. And so I have this experience priced out at $3,297. You could probably go up to $3,400, but I just, I kept it at about four to $5,000 above the cost per ticket. Um, so the profit here is $448. And then the total profit is $6,721. So overall, the total profit difference is only $2,476. But the cost difference between the two experiences is $21,886. So why does that matter? You can see right now that you can charge more for a higher, more luxurious experience. A spa or resort is going to offer that high class, high luxury 
experience and you can charge a higher ticket price for that. You can actually negotiate spa, reduced spa rates or you can include a spa experience in this package. Um, all of your catering and all of the food, like you don't have to worry about any of that like you would with the Airbnb and like having to put out breakfast and put out lunch. You wouldn't necessarily have to worry about as much um, like of the tables and things like that. Um, as you would with the Airbnb because the resort um, people are going to do that for you. You're going to have to set up like the art easels and the art projects, but the actual physical tables and linens and things like that are all included. Another big difference between the Airbnb and resort is pretty much the, the way things are, you have to pay for things at the resort. You kind of just show up with all your boxes. You can have your boxes shipped to the resort. So like you literally just have to ship your body there and um, everything's taken care of for you. You're gonna have dedicated rooms. You're gonna have dedicated registration pay place. You're gonna have dedicated storage for all these things. And you're gonna have a catering service that's gonna set up and break down all of the food. Um, the menus are gonna be planned in advance. You don't have to worry about any of that. So it's like, a sh it's a peace of mind that says that the rooms are gonna be gorgeous. The property is gonna be gorgeous. The experience is gonna be gorgeous and it's a high ticket experience. But if you're not a high ticket coach and you're not charging, you know, 10 grand or seven grand for your services to be able to charge what you need to charge to make a to make money on this. But with the Airbnb, I know I went on about resorts, but with the Airbnb, you're gonna have a more rustic, a more authentic, less luxurious. You Don't get me wrong, Airbnbs are still luxurious. Like that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is it's going to be a little bit more bootstrapped together, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, to make tables beautiful. I'm here to set things up. I'm here to tear things down. It's just a different level of intensity and hands-on with an Airbnb than it would be with a resort. So I know that that was very numbers forward and that was a lot to digest, but the overall takeaway needs to be that either experience is okay. Either, but you need to choose the experience that's right for your client and right for your business. But both experiences can be very profitable. And I mean, this is for a, a US American Airbnb and resort. Some of these expenses will definitely go down if you go international. So like to Costa Rica, Mexico, etc., the resort costs will go down. And that's really important key takeaway because like you can make more money on the same ticket price. <clears throat> and it would be more comparable to the Airbnb price tag with the resort experience. So if this was helpful, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you're watching on the replay, let me know. Um, stay tuned and I will chat at you later. Bye guys.